Sinead. <laughs> oh, Father, you almost make me feel sorry yes, for this Yes, 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 laugh, laugh, laugh all you want, young brigand. Age comes to us all, you know. But in my day, you'd never have beaten me. Those songs like excuses, Father. Oh, allow and me some liberties, won't you? Now, I shall miss you, my boy. <coughs> Father. And that does not detract from how very, very proud I am of you, D'Artagnan. Oh, mon Dieu, Michel, you've been fighting again, haven't you? Oh, I will miss you. Mother. No, no, I am well, my dear. I promised myself not to come and down like this. Now, my dear boy, I have here a special ornament. Oh, passed pass down, down from, from generations. Don't we go? Yes, the recipe dates back from generations. Be white, vinegar, wine. Well, I won't bore you with it. But use it on any wounds, my boy. Any wounds, yes? If you run out, you come straight back. I don't care if you are a fancy, important monsieur of musketeer. You come straight back. Leave the boy, back. ma chère, leave the boy. Now, you know your way to Paris. You take this letter. Oh, here it is. And you give it to Capitaine de Treville. We served a very, very long time together, and he should just remember his old friend. It may very well help you in your quest to become a musketeer. Thank you, Father. Now, submit to no insults from any man, except the king, and be weary of the cardinal. He rules France in the king's name, a powerful man. Yes, Father. And, well, you ought to be brave for two reasons. The first is that you are a Gascon, and the second is that, well, you're our son. Now, don't fear quarrels, but seek adventures, and get on your horse. She's tethered the gate. Good luck, my son. Godspeed. Father. Mother. Au revoir. A bientôt. Very well. And what will you do? I 
I shall return to Paris. Yeah, good. I envy you. Who, incidentally, is an insolent boy over there? This insolent boy, as you call me. Chastise order, would not dare fly this time. I take it, sir. A gentleman would not dare fly in the presence of a lady. Remember, the smallest delay may ruin everything. You are quite right. Go then, do your part, and I will depart to see to mine. Pray, sir, <laughs> let him go. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, my lady, but I have business with that gentleman. Business I must see to. Quite the young gentleman, I see. And so handsome. For it is business that wouldn't have anything to do with the gentleman who just left, would it? I'm sorry to say, but it would. Now, that is unfortunate. Especially given that you seem to be having trouble maintaining yourself upright. No, please. My lady, my deepest apologies, but I must... It's your musketeers and my guards. They appear to have been fighting again, Your Majesty. What fighting? What's a bit of roughhousing between the lads, huh? Keeps them sharp, keeps them strong. <laughs> <laughs> Who won, incidentally? <laughs> that would be the Cardinal's guards, sir. Oh, and Cardinal Treville. Who was involved? A king must know which of his subjects is so loyal to the crown that he will defy his own lords in his name. Their names. It may not surprise your majesty, but it seems to have come down to the same few repeat offenders. Loyal musketeers, sire. Hmm. That would have been Athos, Porthos, and Aramis, sire. Some of your faiths. Indeed, they never missed the opportunity to defend the honour of the king and the regiment. Hmm. Well, Expected better from those gentlemen to, um, well, not fight, that is. Who, how many were involved, anyway? <coughs> yes, uh, that would be six guards against uh, six musketeers. Well, I see. Oh, Anne, my beloved, how fare you today? I fare well, Your Majesty. I came to inquire as to your own well being. Ah, playing again, I see. And how was your game? His Majesty did admirably as ever, but allowed me a lucky defeat. Oh, most gracious of you, sire. Well, a king is a king, but he is a man also, subject to error. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> will you go, um, riding again today? Why, yes, barring anything of import, I shall go on a hunt today. Ah. Another. 
How splendid for France that she has such a, a vital and sporting king. Well, there are no matters of state to attend to, so... Actually, sire, there is still the small issue of England and the Duke of Buckingham. The man continues to make preparations for war, sire. If not war, certainly hostility towards France. War may be something of an overstatement, Your Majesty. Well, I think the Cardinal is better suited to make that estimation. Très bien. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, undertake what you deem is necessary until we decide on something um, more definitive. Yeah. I shall continue to do so, sir. Now I shall return to my duties. Majesty, your highness. Captains, might I have a word with you both? Perhaps, Treville, Josette can teach you a thing or two. In the art of training your men, that is. I like to think of our two regiments as evenly matched. Oh, well, yesterday's scream you showed quite the opposite, Trevi. Ah! It is open, Treville. <laughs> <laughs> That is quite all right, dear. Oh, but it might be enjoyable to spend some time with you outside of the palace. No, you'll just become bored and dull. <laughs> oh. Never mind, Your Majesty, we will try again tomorrow. It's almost as if he does not want to spend time with me. I'm sure it's not that, Your Majesty. Oh, I fear he is as miserable with this match as I. You mustn't say such things, Your Majesty. You never know who might be listening. Yes. Yes, it's true. It's just, I try, Constance. You know how I try. And yet, any friends I make here are swiftly removed. And I, I am left with no one. The Cardinal. Hush, Your Majesty. You must exercise caution, Your Majesty. Yes, yes, always caution. You, you are my only friend here, Constance. All others are. Not your only friend, Your Majesty. <laughs> well, yes, right you are, my dear friend. Come, let us go for a ride ourselves. <laughs> One of ours, Luke, I think it was. Pish! What a fool! 
But, but are you certain that this happened? You know it did, Porthos. I told you only yesterday. But come, let us say no more about it. Say no more of it? Just because you say so? Ha! Pest! Why, if it's the same story you told me, Aramis, then the Cardinal set a spy upon the gentleman and stole his letter using that villainous traitor Rochefort, and then, using that same spy, had Michel's throat cut on the pretense of him wanting to kill the king and marry the queen. Also, your spontaneous conclusions suggest. Very well, then. Let us talk about it, since you desire it so. I would spend a minute or two very uncomfortably with this Rochefort. Mm, yes, you. Uh, you would pass a rather sad and painful quarter hour, though, with the Red Duke. <laughs> the Red Duke! <laughs> bravo! Bravo! I'll circulate that saying, be assured. The Red Duke! <laughs> what a wit! What a wonderful abbot you would have made! Now, it's only a temporary <laughs> postponement, Porthos, I assure you. I shall be an abbot someday. It is why I continue to study theology, as you well know. Well, what are you waiting for then, Aramis? Only till the Queen has given an heir to the crown of France. Be careful <laughs> on that subject, gentlemen. Be glad the Queen is still of an age to give one. Mm, they say that Monsieur de Buckingham is in France. Cut that, Aramis. Oh, pish. Everyone knows that they are fond of one another. What are you going to give me a lesson, Porthos? My dear fellow, be an abbot or a musketeer, one or the other, but not both. Athos, Porthos, Aramis, I not properly. Do you know what the king said to me? And that no sooner than yesterday evening. Do you know, gentlemen? No. No. <laughs> no, sir, you do not. But I hope you will do us the gracious honour of telling us why. He told me that he should henceforth recruit his musketeers from amongst the guards of Monsieur the Cardinal. The guards of the Cardinal? Why, sir? Because he sees clearly that his brew stands in need of being enlivened by a mixture of good wine. <laughs> and his majesty was right! For upon my honour the musketeers make but a miserable figure at court. The Cardinal related yesterday, while playing with the king, that those damn musketeers, those braggarts, had made a riot in the roof of room, and that his men, I thought he was going to laugh in my face, had been forced to arrest the rioters. Mon Dieu, musketeers, don't deny it. You were recognised, and the Cardinal named you. But it's all my fault, yes, because it is I who selects my men. And why in the devil did you ask me for a uniform when you would have looked so much better in a cassock? <laughs> and you, Porthos, do you only wear such a fine gold baldric to suspend a sword of straw from it? And Athos, where is Athos? I don't see him. Where is he? Ill, sir. Ill? Of what malady? Uh, the smallpox, sir. And what is serious about it is that it will certainly spoil his face. The smallpox? <laughs> That's a good story to tell me, Porthos. No. But wounded, no doubt. Killed, perhaps. God's blood, the Cardinal's men would never let themselves get arrested. Nor would they run from a fight, I don't suppose. Six of the Cardinal's guards arrest six of the King's musketeers. Mon Dieu, I'm done! I will go straight to the Louvre. I will resign as captain of the King's guards to take a lieutenancy in the Cardinal's guards. And if he refuses me, more blood, I will turn abbot! My captain, we were six against six. But we are not captured by famines. Before we even could draw our swords, two of our party lay dead. And Athos not, was not faring any better. For you, for you know Athos, Captain. Well, twice he endeavoured to get up, and he fell again twice. <laughs> and we did not surrender, no! They took us away by force, and on the way we escaped. As for poor Athos, they didn't think it worth the while to carry him away. So they left him very quietly on the field of battle. That's what happened, Captain. What the devil? One cannot win all one's battles. And I have the honor of assuring you, Captain, that I killed one of them with his own sword. For well, mine was broken at the first peril. <laughs> and another I killed with my very own poniard, sir, as is most agreeable to you. 
I see. I didn't know that. The Cardinal exaggerated then. Yes. And pray, do not say that Athos was wounded, for he would fall in despair should that come to the ears of a king. And as the wound was very serious, seeing as how after crossing the shoulder it penetrates into the chest, it is to be feared that Athos! you might... You sent for me? You sent for me as my comrades inform me? I've hastened to receive your orders. I'm here. What do you want with me? I was about to tell these gentlemen that I forbid my musketeers to risk their lives needlessly. The brave men are very dear to the king, and the king knows that his musketeers are the bravest on the earth. <coughs> Your hand, Athos. Quick! The surgeon! Mine, the king's, the cardinals! My oh, dear Athos will die of the smallpox. Excuse me. Excuse me, my dear compatriot, but I'd wholly forgotten you. But it cannot be helped. <coughs> the captain is nothing but the father of a family, charged with an even greater responsibility. Soldiers are big children, but as I maintain the orders of the king, and more particularly the cardinal, should be executed! <laughs> I respected your father very much. What can I do for the son? Tell me quickly, boy, my time is not my own. <clears throat> Monsieur! Upon leaving Gascony and coming here, it was my intention to, in remembrance of the friendship with my father, which I know that you have by no means forgotten, to request the uniform of a musketeer. Having said that and seen and heard all that I have in this short hour, I now realize that such a failure is a huge one to ask. And I fear I do not merit it. It is indeed a failure, young man. But it may not be so far beyond your hopes as you believe, or rather as you appear to believe. But His Majesty's permission is always necessary. And I inform you with regret that no one can become a musketeer without the preliminary ordeal of several military campaigns or certain brilliant actions. Or for that matter, two years' service in some other regiment less favoured than our own. But on account of my friend, your father, I will do something for you, young man. Our recruits from Gascony are generally not very rich, and I have no reason to believe that things have changed that much in this regard since I left the province. So, I yes, charity of no man. That's very well. I know these heirs. I myself came to Paris with four crowns in my purse, <coughs> and I would have fought with anyone who dared to tell me I wasn't in a position to purchase the Louvre. Well, so, I am actually starting with eight crowns. I had to send my horse back in now. Well then, harbour that son, my friend. And work to keep it. And work at transforming yourself into a perfect gentleman. In the morning I shall write a letter to the director of the Royal Academy. And he will admit you there at no expense to yourself. You will learn everything you need to become a perfect gentleman. You will learn swordsmanship, horsemanship, and dance. From time to time, I will call upon you just to see how you are getting along. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. I, I wish I had had my letter to give you, to recommend me further, perhaps. Make, make no mistake here, my friend. <coughs> the favour that I do you here today is in your best interests. You are new to Paris and to its surroundings, so let me tell you this. The King and the Cardinal are best of friends. Their apparent bickering serves only to deceive fools, and I would not have you become a dupe of these two all-powerful masters. But be assured I am devoted to these two all-powerful men, and that my endeavours have no other aim than the service of the king. Now, I hope that my frankness assures you of my friendship. I do not often speak so openly to those who I have just met. Well, sir, I came to Paris with exactly such intentions. My father advised me to stoop to nobody but the king, the cardinal, and yourself, who we consider to be the three first personages in <coughs> France. I thank you for the faith you showed me in speaking as frankly as you have. And I understand that you will wait, that I've proved myself worthy of your regiment. Well, be assured, sir, we not have to wait long. I thank you for everything, sir. The devil! You will not escape me again this time! Thief! Whoa! Oh, excuse me, but I'm in a hurry. Oh, you're in a hurry, are you? With that pretense you run against me? You say, excuse me, and think that 
is sufficient. Not at all, my young man. Listen, I didn't do it on purpose. I'm not doing it on purpose. I said, excuse me, it appears to me that this is quite enough. <laughs> Monsieur, you are not polite. It's easy to perceive you come from a distance. I beg your pardon, monsieur. <laughs> However far I may have come, it's not you who's going to give me a lesson in good manners. I warn you. Perhaps. Ah, oh, if I was not in such a hurry, and if I was not running a Monsieur, man in a hurry, you need not run to find me. Me. You understand? And where, I pray you? At the candle show at noon. All right, then. I shall be there, 10 minutes to 12. It's not mine, I assure you, and I do not know why this young boy tried to offer it to me. Look, mine is here in my pocket. Ah, uh, Aramis, will you persist in saying, most discreet Aramis, that you're not on good foot with Madame de Boitracy when that most gracious lady has to good manners to lend you a handkerchief? <laughs> <laughs> In truth, I saw the gentleman's foot on the thing and simply assumed, forgive the mistake. I know how to <laughs> solve this problem here. I am an intimate friend of Madame de Bois Tracy, that is true, but friends only. And I shall prove that by taking this handkerchief back to her, <laughs> myself. Very well. <clears throat> Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> <clears throat> well. Sir, I hope that you will uh, excuse Monsieur, me. Monsieur, permit me to observe to you that you have not acted in this affair as a gallant man or. Monsieur, I think that you are not a fool and you very well that although coming from Gascony, people do not step on handkerchief with no reasons. What the devil? Paris is not paved with silk. I have said, Monsieur, and I repeat, the handkerchief did not fall from my pocket. <coughs> And thereby you have played twice, for I saw it fall! Ah! You take it in that tone, do you, Master Gascon? Very well. Allow me to teach you how to behave yourself. And I will send you back to your mass book, Master Abbott. Go, sir! Are you dead? 
Do you not know that dueling is illegal here? And that we are opposite the Hotel d'Argoyon, which is full of the Cardinal's creatures? No. At two o'clock, I shall have the honour of expecting you at the Hotel of Monsieur de Treville. There, I shall indicate to you the best time and place. <clears throat> well, I <coughs> shall see you there, sir. Well, <laughs> if I get killed, I shall get killed by a musketeer. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, Monsieur Aramis. Almost, no. 
So, gentlemen, I repeat my apologies and en garde! Ha! Les mousquetaires! Tu la is illegal! You really ought to know better. It's five against three! Four! Four? Four! Four. Oh, no! Come here, boy! Exchange their, their partisan hatred for private hatred. For alas, the king's guards and the cardinal's guards are sworn enemies. Yes, despite serving the two heads of royalty in France. So the guards attacked first, then. I do not dare to judge, sire. That is for you. And for those admirable instincts which cause you to be named King Louis, the just. You're right, Treville. But come, you say they had a youth with them? Yes, sire. And one wounded man. So there were three musketeers. One a wounded man, and one a boy. But all of whom stood their ground against five of the cardinal's most feared and terrible guardsmen. Why, this is a victory! A complete victory! <laughs> one hardly a boy, sire. But who behaved so admirably on this occasion, I will take the liberty of recommending him to your majesty. How does he call one himself? D'Artagnan, sire. He is the son of one of my oldest friends, the son of a man who served under the king, your father, of glorious memory in the Civil War. He, a civilian, was dressed as such, and upon seeing this, the cardinal's guards invited him to retreat before they attacked. So the guards attacked first, then? So it would seem, sire. The youth answered that he was a musketeer at heart, entirely devoted to your majesty, and that therefore he would remain with Monsieur the Musketeers. Uh, brave young man. 
and he did remain with them. And it was he who gave to Jussac the terrible sword thrust, which has made the Cardinal so angry. You mean to say it is he that's wounded Jussac? He, a boy? Trivial, that's impossible. Jussac, one of the finest swordsmen in the kingdom? Well, sir, on this occasion it appears he met his master. I take it you've, uh, you've summoned him. Indeed, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen! Come in, my braves, come in. I am going to scold you. Fighting again, have we, gentlemen? That is too many. <clears throat> and therefore, your majesty sees they have come quite contrite, quite contrite, to make no excuses. No. Contrite. That remains to be seen. Look, this is a boy. You said he was a man. This is a boy, a mere boy. You mean to say it's he that wounded your son? Indeed, sire, without reckoning. If he had not rescued me from the hands of Dujac, I would not now have the humble honor of making my humble reverence to your majesty. Indeed, humble. But, Mr. <laughs> Gascon, it's the very devil. Ha! At this sort of work, many doublets must be slashed, and many swords broken. Now, Gascon's always poor, if not. Le Chalet, fetch me those forty pistols. Well, gentlemen, I hear you've had some trouble with yourselves in the garden. You have defended your honor and mine admirably. But let it be known, that is enough. You have defended yourselves. You ought to be satisfied. If your majesty is so. Oh, but I am so. Gilt. Show my appreciation. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> well, let me be clear. I want to hear no more words from the Cardinal or the Euro Captain on this. Do, I, do you understand? Yes, Your, Your Majesty. Majesty. Well, gentlemen, you are dismissed. Adieu. Correct. 
in a suit. We were standing about here in a leisurely suit of sort of manner, not doing particularly much of anything. <laughs> On the contrary, I was engaged in something quite grand. I was contemplating life, the great, vast, moving sky that is life. <laughs> Sirs, it is quite easy. Look, see how the clouds roll and move and fly, all in different shapes and sizes and consistencies, all pushed along by the same vast and changing air currents. So it is with life. People of all shapes and sizes brought together on the current of events and circumstance. I see. You are a thinking man. <laughs> I would say a feeling man, though back home none would say there was any as thinking as Planchet. Uh, At uh, your service, uh, gentlemen. Planchet, my good man, how would you like to be this young man's lady? The pay is low, but you'll be in the company of greats, and not regularly in that of musketeers. Ah, you had me at pay. Well, yes, sir, or should I say master, I humbly accept. The great current pushes me this way, and I move with it. Uh, very welcome to my service, Planchet. Very good, sir. <coughs> right, um, shall we? Why, yes, young master, lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. My fear she's been abducted based on the intrigues of a lady much more powerful than she. Oh, but I cannot say more. Well, please, sir, I would remind you that you are not, well, you came to me and therefore are not compelled to anything. No, no, I must. I. This is no secret, sir. I can trust you, can I not? Yes, you can trust me. <laughs> I fear it's the Queen's secret she's been arrested for. <laughs> sir, sir, save me. What are your agreement to protect me? Oh, don't, please compose yourself, sir. Mr. Mercer, open this door now. You are under arrest. <coughs> please, friends, no smoke. We must not resist them. But you promised me, sir, not the Bastille. 
Hold on the Bastille! <laughs> Sir, how can we possibly protect and save you from within the Bastille? And much less find your wife now? Smart fellow. Bonjour, are you in there? <clears throat> yes, he is in there! He is my landlord and came bursting in here demanding money from me. Me, musketeer, no less! You promised me, sir! <laughs> He's honouring that promise, sir. Thank you, monsieur. <laughs> now, would someone kindly explain to me what's going on? It's as our Gascon friend said, Porthos. We can't hope to help the man if we are all locked up in the Bastille. Yes, and this way we can set a mousetrap in this place. And not only find Madame Bonacieux, but also who it is that abducted her and the one that sits behind all this intrigue. Well, well, all right. But you could have said so from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> there was no time, my friend. Mm, that does leave the question. Madame Bonacieux, is she abducted? Well, yes. Her husband says on intrigue of the queen, and yes, yeah, she is clearly subsumed to have been taken away by the cardinal's men. Yes, he's been isolating her, abducting, removing, killing anyone close or loyal to her. I believe he's tried to create strife between her and the king. He already tried to frame her for recruiting Spanish troops, or she was merely expressing her unhappiness to her brother, the Spanish prince. <laughs> and the English? The Duke of Buckingham, the commander of the British forces, is said to be in Paris. Oh dear, it's true. Why must she love what we hate most? The Spanish and the English. <laughs> well, Spain is our, is our country, right? So it is quite natural that she should love the children of the same soul as herself. Well, yes, as to the second reproach, I heard that she doesn't love the English, but an English man. Hmm. And upon my honor, that particular English man is Buckingham. He is worthy of being loved. Never saw a man with a nobler air. Well then, <laughs> seems settled. This poor Madame Bonacieux seems to be woven into a royal intrigue, an affair of sorts. But not much to be done, unless we find Madame. Hmm. So I will stand guard here with Planchet and wait for her or the guards to return and inquire further. Good idea, the president. Send Planchet to my quarters when you need us. We'll be there in an instant. Keep you safe. Safe? 
Not possible, I fear, my gallant friend. You do not trust me. Trust you? <laughs> we have only just met. However, given your courageous intervention, yes, I do trust you. However, the secret is not mine to share. Do you understand? I must go before I am discovered. Please, madam, let me escort you. I promise to make no inquiries and to leave you the moment you come in. And do you promise not to say a word of where I go? Not to a soul? I promise not to say a word to anyone. Upon my honor as a musketeer. Well, future musketeer. <laughs> Very well then. Grab yourself a cloak and a hat. You're clearly new to Paris, but a face once seen is easily recognized, and our enemies have many spies. Oh, <coughs> and may I have your name, please, sir? But of course, madam. I am Monsieur d'Artagnan. At your service. Surprise. 
quite frankly, anyone can. <clears throat> Sir, I beg you, shadow myself and Madame. Of course, Your Grace. They are nothing to your beauty, but they shall be an eternal, <coughs> sparkling reminder of your affection. They are dear to me, just as you are. Now please, go.
Yes. Um, he knows. Uh, it seems the Queen has had a visitor. What did you see? I saw nothing, Your Eminence, but the Queen dismissed all but Madame Bonacieux before moving into her closet. She then asked for her rosewood box, which all the ladies know contained the twelve diamond studs the Queen wants to receive from the King. You are certain of this? Certain that the box is gone, yes, and that the Queen came out to straw. And there is another entrance to her closet? I believe so, Your Eminence, <coughs> though I cannot say for certain. Very well. You may go. Your Eminence, my brother... Is safe from harm. Continue as you do, and you will continue to be so. You think it was him? Buckingham. Who else could it be? An assumption, Eminence. A sweeping assumption. Balance of probability, Rochefort. This means the Queen has given him a token, a proof of their mutual affection. So it seems. She must be exposed. The King must find out about this. He, he may not believe you. He still harbors a certain affection for the Queen. Indeed. That is why he must discover her treachery himself, of his own accord. A ball is needed, I think, Rochefort. We must expose her. And I must write to Milady de Winter. Especially when presented with a new 
one would believe so, right, sire. However, as you know, I care deeply for both your matches and for your happiness together. Yes, which I don't appreciate, Your Majesty. I'm hot. <laughs> it's quite difficult to know this place. Anyway, what can I do for you? Well, the Queen seems somewhat forlorn as of late. Sam, if you will. I am not sure that Paris or even France is agreeing with her. France? Why the devil not? That is not for me to say, Your Majesty. However, it is worth remembering that she is a stranger in a foreign land. Her close friends at court seem to leave her. Perhaps some cheer would do her good. Oh. Anything for my beloved queen? What does he suggest? That is not my place to say, Your Majesty. <laughs> Come now, Cardinal. You are more than an advisor to me. I know in that industrious mind of yours you just have some idea just waiting to come out, and I insist on hearing it. You flatter me, sir. <laughs> and who can refuse a royal insistence? It occurred to me, Your Majesty, that her uh, hands <laughs> for some more activity, given her time in Austria and indeed her Spanish blood. Perhaps some liveness would suit her. A ball, perhaps. Oh, a capital idea. A theme, perhaps. A masquerade. An excellent idea, Your Majesty. Oh, yes. And may I be so bold as to suggest, you once gave her a kingly gift of twelve diamond studs. Why not ask her to wear them on the night? To remind her of your love. Remind her she is loved and not alone. In fact, a true romantic might insist upon it. So, very attentive of you, Richard. Indeed, a reminder of my love and her place in this court shall do wonders, I'm sure. In fact, I shall summon her now. Fresh the Queen. Now there is still a small matter of when, your majesty. Ah, yes. Three weeks, perhaps? Well, given her sad and state, but also the time required to make the appropriate preparations for such a royal grandeur, two weeks might be better. Excellent. Fifteen days it is, then. Ah, <laughs> you are the loyal servant. So, always, Your Majesty. Ah, and my beloved, how fare you today? I am well, Your Majesty. You are kind to ask. Is there anything I might do for you? You summoned me. Why, yes. I hear you're not quite yourself of late. So I've decided to lift your spirits and remind you what you mean to me and to this beautiful country. Your Majesty is too kind. So, I've decided we should have a ball. Oh, what a wonderful idea, my king. Yes, in two weeks' time. Rather soon, any particular reason? Why, the Cardinal implored me so, so concerned he is with your well-being. Ah, your eminence is most considerate. I am at both your services. <laughs> and, <coughs> I would like you to wear those diamond studs I gave you, as a reminder to me and to our country, and most importantly to you, of our deep <coughs> and lasting affection. Oh, what a, a lovely, sentimental idea, my king. I shall wear them proudly. Another suggestion of yours, your eminence. You are always so considerate. Well, your eminence, your majesty, I must consult with my dressmakers at once. Do. It is a masquerade. Naturally. <laughs> All the more reason to consult. Your Majesty, Your Eminence. Well, it is settled. Come, Cardinal. I have some matters to speak with. By all means, Your Highness. Someone who is brave and loyal and untouched by the Cardinal's influence. Someone who is 
Lord the King. Constance, my dear friend, you are certain. Yes, Your Majesty. You know how much depends on his success. There can be no error. I know, Your Majesty. <coughs> he is not one to take such a mission lightly. We must make haste then. Thank you, Constance. I will need a letter containing instructions and signed by your own personal seal. Of course, right away, my dear friend. <coughs> the roads and the ports. You will need help. Yes, and a leave of absence. I shall write a letter to your commanding officer. Athos will need to take two weeks leave. Mm. Porthos, Aramis and yourself will accompany him. On my orders. Well, sir, the four of us? Yes. For one to reach London, four will have to leave Paris. Now go, my Gascon friend. Speed is of the essence. People will try to stop you along the way, but you mustn't let them, do you understand? That's why the musketeers will be with you. Thank you, Capitaine. Thank you for everything. Now go. Inform our friends of their trip. Go. Get ready. Make haste.
Oh, what are you um, here, man? Someone what is us? Well, yes. Listen, gentlemen. I have a letter from Capitaine de Treville. Atos, you've been granted leave for two weeks to take the waters of Forge. Take the waters? And you, uh, Atos, Portos, and Aramis are to go with him, as will I. What on earth are you talking about, D'Artagnan? Uh, the most loyalties are beyond question. Speak. What's Thank going on, friend? Well, gentlemen, I have received a mission, an urgent mission, from the highest level of the palace. I am to go to London and return all within 15 days. The stakes are exceedingly high, my friend. My figure <coughs> could mean war. Can you explain? Not much. Uh, to London and back in 15 days? This is madness. It can be done. But you will require all haste. Why is it you require us? This mission is something that the Cardinal will seek to obstruct. And Captain de Treville said that for one to reach London... Four should set out. Mm. Indeed, if the Cardinal does not will it, he'll be watching the ports and the roads. All right, Virginia, we'll get ourselves equipped at once. You know, the arrangements. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for everything. But of course, we serve the king. And the queen. And you are a musketeer in spirit. Porthos, oh. <coughs> Aramis, go to your homes. We'll meet at two o'clock, behind by and the heat. Until tonight, then.
Hold, sir. <coughs> this road is closed. Closed. But, sir, it seems intact, and we have need to cross it. Perhaps you didn't, didn't hear me, but this road's closed. Again. Sir, it seems perfectly fine to me. Why not step aside? Well, Alan is... Take him! Take him! Amos! Go out, let's go out there! Go, get him, go! I'll handle this. All for one! And one for all! Clap, clap! Also, does he know about the blockade, you think? 
Well, Blanchet, I think it just might. And if it does, we may be able to borrow his letter from the cardinal, which I believe it just had verified by the governor over there, to be able to take a ship to London. If not, we'll think about something else. Confounded rules! All the way up to the bloody governor's office. Who the hell does he think he is? King Thanos of Greece? <laughs> oh. Right. Where's that letter? <clears throat> so, are you taking a boat to England? Why, yes I am. <laughs> and do you have a letter from the cardinal? <coughs> well, yes I do. Then you buy by the governor over there. But of course, my Guscon friend. <sighs> well then, sir, my apologies. For what? <laughs> <laughs> So ready to set the sail then. Now, Bonchet, we wait.
and I seek an urgent audience from the Duke. So, tell me, lads, what's all this about? You're a mutual friend of the... Yes, all oh, mutual friend. Oh, pish. The Red Duke's reach is weaker here, lad. <clears throat> well, your grace, no one can be too careful when the Cardinals is concerned. Here, we are in private now. Let me see that note. No! No! She is doomed! No, this cannot be! It can, and I'm afraid it is, Your Grace. I hope that you will now understand <coughs> my reason for coming here, and the need for you to show me the token given to you, so I may travel back with it. Yes, yes, of course. Come through, please. <laughs> Here, here it is, the gift she gave me, 12 diamond studs. They, they've come to mean much to me. I'm loath to part with them, but for her sake. No! What is it, your race? The studs, there are only 10. <laughs> what, how? The devil! If you bring them back now, the cardinal will know. But how indeed? I've been wearing them frequently as of late. That confounded lady the winter. She, <coughs> she'd been paying special attention to me at that blasted ball and curse my eyes I did not notice. What am I to do? I've ruined her, damned her. Perhaps all is not lost, your grace. May I see the studs? <clears throat> <coughs> well, now, I am no study of jewels, but do you think the two missing studs could be replaced? Yes. Yes. I know a man. I will write to him at once. Give this to my man outside. Tell him to hurry, as his life depended on it. <coughs> what about Milady de Winter? When was the last time you saw her? Oh, a day or two ago? Well, it may not make a difference, but do you think, Your Grace, that you could track her down, perhaps, or maybe keep her in London? No. London is a teeming mass, but I could close the ports. You say the Cardinal did so? What? So can I. But, Your Grace, this could be an act of aggression? Yes, it may be seen as such. I will send out a report that it is to catch smugglers. And it is, but temporary. There may be a diplomatic storm to be weathered later, no matter. Your Grace, this could mean war. I cannot think about that now, young man. Where is that bloody jeweler? On his way, I am sure. Also, Your Grace, we had only a few days to replicate the diamonds, as I must be back within seven days. In seven days? Well, I will have a boat ready for you. In any case, none of that nonsense you had at Calais. It all depends on the jeweler and on any friends you have. On the other side. I fear so. As to my friends, I think they will know <coughs> what to do. Oh. Ah, Canadian, my good man. I don't have any time for pleasantries. Could you replicate these diamonds? Two of them, specifically. It will be difficult, Your Grace. But can it be done? I will pay for all other contracts, if that means that you can work day and night and have it done in two days. That's very generous of you, Your Grace. I'm not generous, damn it. Can you do it or not? Well, if I have all my equipment and tools at hand, I will work day and night, 
then yes, I believe it should be done. Excellent. You, sir, go and get the Judas things. Connelly, you may work from here, if you please. This mission requires utmost discretion, and we have not a moment to lose. Mr. D'Artagnan, I will ask you to stay close. We cannot be too careful. You may recall, she notes two Frenchmen in the harbour, both clearly new to London. One seemed familiar, but she could not place. She advises caution and preventative measures. Yes, I recall. It seems excessive, but then again, the lady's instincts are impeccable. Yes, the more I consider it, the more I deem it prudent. It is a small effort to send men to watch Calais. <coughs> Have Joseph go there with some of his more discreet men. They ought to watch the port for anything suspicious. <coughs> what are they to look for? Anything suspicious, Rochefort! They have eyes, are they not? Must I think of everything? Ah, uh, apologies, Eminence. I, I only meant to make their instructions as clear as possible. There is a rumour from our friends in London. Apparently the Duke wishes to close the ports. I wonder why he suddenly wishes that to all things. Ah, it is but a rumour. He would not dare. I'm more to the point. Why would he? Milady assures us he suspected nothing after her deft intervention at the ball. Investigate the rumor. I want her here in case of. In case of what? In case, by some miracle, that little wooden box finds its way back across the channel. I need proof it left the Queen's possession. Naturally, Eminence. Not for you, perhaps, watch for. But all outcomes must be planned for. Come, let us go visit the king and see how the queen is fed. We should enjoy her presence here, Rochefort, while it lasts.
Well, there are several ships due to be put to port today, and they have the express permission from important people, as I understand it. One smaller vessel is coming in as we speak. Bah! Four days left. No guarantee you'll be in one of them. The Cardinal closing the ports. What a lark! Discretion, Porthos. That sounds sense for an intelligent and ruthless man. All the same, Aramis, you're saying ships are coming in despite all this? Indeed. I can only hope that the Duke has helped our young friend as much as his considerable influence will allow. Well, considering the nature of this mission, I imagine so. Well, we'll be all for not a dozen gun doesn't arrive in time. Four days left to get to Paris. The roads may be dangerous. It could surprise us. The Cardinal should not be aware there is a threat to his plan. It's the Cardinal we're talking about, Evans. Sumi knows. All the same, it changes nothing. We will guard our and strive to keep him safe. Porthos, have you arranged your horses? Yes, and provisions. Good man. Then we wait. What if we miss him? Oh, Calais is large, but all ships must dock here. And this is the first inn on the way to the main road. I imagine our young friend will need supplies. We wait again. I fear the Red Duke is erring on the side of caution. Indeed. Be vigilant. Be careful where you step, Michel. We're sorry, but Porthos! <laughs> Hamis and Athos, even the Remo. D'Azayan, did you succeed? We did. And now, my friends. On guard! Lord you sat naturally. Good evening, gentlemen. I believe I can let you go to Paris without some questions first. D'Azayan, the horses in the stable. Go! Not tight boxes! Go, Jack! Ah, bastard!
splendid. A dance, perhaps. Oh, where are your studs? Yes, it is my natural wish for you to wear them this evening, Your Highness. Indeed he did, Your Eminence. Your Majesty, I intend to put them on when we retire, to change into our costumes. Speaking of which, I am most looking forward to your chosen disguise. Marvelous. This is art. Some of the most 
loyal ones, the favorites of Louis. One only hears so much, you know, and I long to know more of these five men. They do what they can, Your Majesty. Here's you are not successful, the lady. I beg your pardon. Not successful. The queen. <gasps> Come, the lady. We have much to discuss. and through some other vile course. Do you think so? Well, consider the lengths he's gone through, Latignan. His ambition knows no bounds. Cruel, intelligent, he is a danger to the king. I agree. I fear it is not a matter of if, but when he tries to sabotage the <coughs> king again. Well, we'll be ready when he does, gentlemen. Indeed we will. All for one! And, and one, one for all! all. 